just got home from walking the dogs and it's actually really nice outside it's not windy at all and it's really the perfect conditions right now aside from it being cold but i don't think it'll be cold enough to start hurting my fingers because i don't have any open finger gloves but um yeah i'm just setting up the drone and then we're gonna get ready to take some flights Good morning, it's the next day. Did you like those drone shots? I know there wasn't many, only because I was getting so much signal interference between the controller and the drone. I was flying back and forth, back and forth, and it was just getting cut off and I was just getting frustrated. So those shots was as much as I, some of the shots that I got yesterday. Now, while I was getting frustrated, I decided to put them away i decided to put them away and do my saturday morning chores and if you watch the prior videos you know saturday morning is poop pick and pita time now while i was doing that i figured i already had the drone all set up it was all charged i had my geo zones unlocked and it was ready to go so i figured i might as well get some of the drone footage of me picking up some dog poop while that i'm going to throw that footage up and we're going to discuss whether or not the mini is now doo doo compared to the mini 2. now as i was out there picking up the doo doo it got me thinking should i have waited to get the mini 2. now a, a couple maybe a month ago my buddy actually got the mini 2 and he kind of rubbed it in my face yo top top think shower Oh fuck yeah, she's almost fucking downloaded, fucking charged, got the apps all set up, all the firmware updated, charge alert, charge double USB-C, upload charge, you know, fly this bitch after I come back from the bank. I don't really mind, he's a funny guy, but maybe I'll get to use his drone down the road and kind of make a comparison video, but anyways, it got me thinking, should I have waited? I don't know. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on the Mini 1 and perhaps maybe help you make the decision of whether you should get the Mini or the Mini 2. First off, let's talk price, okay? I'm only going to talk about the Fly More combo because I think the Fly More combo is essential. Having those extra batteries is essential because you're going to go through them really fast. So I'm not even going to talk about the standard combo. I'm just going to talk about the Fly More combo. Now, the Fly More combo for the Mini 1 is 609 Canadian and the Fly More combo of the Mini 2 is 749. That's about a $140 price jump. So that that's a decent amount of difference for you to kind of decide whether or not you should make the, the decision of the Mini or the Mini 2. Now, I know I said I'm not gonna talk about the standard combo, but since the Mini 2 has come out, I have seen sales where the Mini 1 standard combo would get like a sale and they'll throw in an additional battery or a charging case i believe i saw it at costco i'll throw a picture up so you get the little dome thingy that looks pretty cool and you get an extra battery and as i just said the flight time and the additional batteries are most important because you're going to go through them a lot because you're going to fly a lot flying this thing is a blast now, some of the differences between the Fly, the Mini 2 and the Mini is now the Mini 2 has OcuSense 5000 and that's not what it's called, but it has 
the new upgraded OcuSync, so it has a new receiver or controller, so it gives a better signal. So as I said uh, earlier, I only got the few drone shots I did because I was flying out of my backyard. It was a rural area. There's a lot of houses and trees and whatnot blocking the signal. So I was getting disconnected a lot. Now, apparently the OcuSync has a way stronger signal so that you can fly further out without getting disconnected. Um, I have seen videos where people were, you know, just in their, in their neighborhood flying and they got a few far distance out. Now, if that's something that's important to you, that might help you decide. And let's just get this one out of the way. If you absolutely need 4K recording, the Mini 1 is not for you. The Mini 1 only records in 2.7K and the Mini 2 records in 4K. So if 4K is that important to you, then this one is not for you. I think those are the main reasons for you to kind of decide, you know, the better strength and signal and the 4K recording. Now, personally, I still think the Mini is a viable candidate only because when I was flying, I didn't want to fly in my backyard. I had ideas of where I wanted to fly. I wanted to go by a bridge. I wanted to fly by the river. I wanted to fly in the open fields. And when you're in an open field, you're not going to have that much issues. Granted, the Mini 2 can fly, I think, about 10 kilometers, and this is only rated for about 4 kilometers. So when you're planning, I feel like if you're planning, you're not going to be flying that far out anyways. At least I don't. I don't fly the four, four kilometers. The max I've gotten is probably 1.5 kilometers out and that's plenty far for me. But if you actually need the additional distance, then go ahead and get the Mini 2. But as I said, if you already have, like even if you're in the city, um, if you have an idea of what building you want to shoot or what you want to fly around in the city for, um, you can get to that spot and you can fly and I'm sure you won't get any signal breakup. But again, if that's something that's important to you, you want to be confident with your signal strength, then I really do think the Mini 2 is for you. So yeah, those are the kind of the three things that you should be kind of use as your deciding factor. Again, one, the battery. Whichever you choose, get the fly more combo. But if you want to save some money, look for sales of this, because um, the standard combo you'll get, at, for example, again, at Costco, you can get the regular standard combo, but you get an additional battery and a charging case, which is a pretty good deal. Um, so one, make sure you have enough flight time. And two, the signal strength, the signal strength. If you want to be confident of where you're flying, then sure, the Mini 2 is for you. But you know, if you do uh, enough planning for your flying, then really, I think, I think this, is, this is truly good enough and you'll save some money. And then lastly, of course, if 4K is that important to you, then don't even bother looking at this. Just get the Mini 2. Now, I hope this was helpful. It wasn't as much information. I'm not like a huge drone enthusiast, but I do know I love flying this little guy here and it is a blast flying. Now I did get some additional footage when sun was setting. I decided I wanted to go back out and fly. So I'll throw that up here. Now you could see it really wasn't that bad. I flew out decently far and it, there was no breakups and it was decent, nice footage. Now it might be a little bit grainy because it was sunset hour, but it still flew well. And that's why I said, if you plan your shots out well enough, and if you're going in an open field, signal strength should not be a huge 
deterrent for you in getting the Mini 1. So, as always, I hope that was helpful. It wasn't the most detailed review, but I hope I helped you make a decision whether or not you want the Mini 1 or the Mini 2. Leave a comment below on what you think you're going to get. And as always, my name is Peter, and have yourself a dang good day. Thank you.